right, good morning or good afternoon, depending on when you're watching this. Um, uh, welcome Year 8, this is your first science video lesson um, uh, for biology. We're going to start a new topic on types of microscopes, so what I suggest you do is you make sure that you're sitting comfortably, make sure you've got a pen and paper um, to write down some notes, but you also are more than welcome to type up your notes if you can do that on your computer. Uh, but if you're watching this on your phone, you're going to need uh, a pen and paper. Please start by writing down the title at the top there that just says types of microscopes. And once you've done that, have a look at the starter questions that I've put on the board for you. These are really just to gauge where you're at, um, what you know and what you remember about microscopes. So uh, the first question just says, what are living organisms made up of? And how is this different to things that are not alive? And I don't mean things that have died. I mean things that were never alive in the first place. OK, so we're comparing trees to metal or plastic, things that were never alive in the first place. There is a little super challenge at the bottom of the board there, so if you do really well with the first two questions, you find them easy, then have a look at that as well for me, please. So what I suggest you do now is pause the video, have a little think, and then we'll see where you are. Right, what are living organisms made up of? I'm going to try and psychically guess some of the things you've said. Uh, you might have just gone pretty vague and said, I don't know, stuff. Um, you might have said DNA, which is true, there's DNA in there. You might have said cells, in which case, fantastic, that's what we're after. Living organisms are made up of cells. You might have said proteins, that's just as correct as well. And if you're thinking really, really small, you might have said atoms and compounds, um, which is a little bit more physics and chemistry uh, than it is biology, but you're not wrong. Um, uh, how is this different to things that are not alive? So things that are not alive and never were, so metal or plastic, they're not made up of cells. Uh, they're going to be made up of uh, atoms um, and compounds, but certainly not anything that we'd recognise as a cell. So well done with those two. If you had a little go at our super challenge, fantastic. The super challenge says uh, that in medieval times, people did not believe in things that they couldn't see. And if you did believe in things that you couldn't see, people kind of eyed you a bit suspiciously, uh, maybe thought you were a little bit mad. Um, but now we know that actually there are things all around us that we can't see. We know that bacteria exist. And the question just wanted you to think about why people's ideas changed about things that we can't see. Really, um, it was evidence that helped to convince people, particularly things with like infectious diseases. We know that bacteria and viruses are all around us. And if you touch someone who's infected and don't wash your hands and then touch somebody else, we know that the other person could get sick. Um, uh, also, technology. We invented technology that allowed us to start to be able to see some of the things that aren't there. Um, but by no means is technology perfect. It can always get better and we'll always be able to see better, more detailed images of things that are around us that we can't see. OK, so hopefully that got you all warmed up. Um, I'm just going to go over some of the things that we're going to look at today. So we're going to learn how to compare light and electron microscopes, which are two different types of microscopes. Um, I need you to be able to identify the features of a microscope. You've probably used microscopes before in science, but just in case, we're going to go through what the basic features of a microscope are and what each part does. We're going to try to compare light microscopes to electron microscopes. And then we're going to try and use some numbers calculating magnification, image size and actual size using some data. So if you don't have a calculator or a phone with a calculator on it nearby, you might want to pause the video and go grab one. Um, the mass is very light. Please don't put that light, let that put you off um, doing this lesson because it's literally three questions at the very, very end. And it's just to help you with some educate questions that I, I've put up for you. Key skills today are just all vocabulary based. You can see them at the bottom of your screen there. Cells, microscopes, resolution, organelle, subcellular structure and lens. So hopefully I'll go through and use each of those words today um, and if not, define them for you. Right, let's get started. So microscopes, what are they? They are used by scientists to see anything that is microscopic. And the word microscopic quite literally means too small to see with the naked eye. And that is a bit of a weird expression, isn't it? Naked eye. That just means you're not using anything like this lady is in the picture, like a micro, that's not a microscope, that's a magnifying glass. Naked eye means if you can't see it with just your eyes, then it must be microscopic. So bacteria are microscopic. Um, uh, atoms and compounds are microscopic. Um, but we tend to just use microscopes for, for things that are 
living or things that are within a reasonable size that we'd be able to see. So we can't really see atoms and compounds with the microscopes that we use. There are super powerful ones out there that can, but not the ones that we use in school. We tend to use microscopes to see cells and things inside of cells, subcellular structures. Now, microscopes do make up a big part of the practical work that you do in biology when you're learning about cells. Um, and a lot of you who are prolific users of the internet will have seen pictures like this one over here, the expectation picture. This is a microscope image, okay? And it's a beautiful microscope image. It's very clear and you see lots and lots of detail in that image. That's what you expect to see when you use microscopes in school. And unfortunately, quite a lot of you are a bit disappointed when you finally get your hands on a microscope, you get it all set up and then you have the reality, which is over here, kind of a blurry mess. You can see some shapes, some colors, some textures, but it's nowhere near as clear and beautiful as those microscope images you see on the internet. And there is a very, very good reason for that. It's because these two pictures come from two different types of microscope. The ones we have in school are light microscopes. The ones that you see these beautiful pictures from on the internet are electron microscopes. Um, both of these images are showing the same thing, but it's just showing you the difference in detail um, that you can see with an electron microscope and a light microscope. And we'll hear a little bit more about each type of microscope here. If you haven't already guessed what the pictures are of, you might want to pause the video to avoid the spoiler um, before I say what it is in a few seconds. So if you want to guess what the images are, pause the video. And if you're completely not interested in guessing what the pictures are of, um, these are pictures of pollen. So if you've been suffering from hay fever over the last few days, uh, a bit like me, uh, sneezing every five seconds, eyes running, and it's because of these pictures you see on the board. This is plant pollen. This is what gets trapped up your nose and makes you sneeze if you suffer from hay fever. Um, uh, and you can see the level of detail um, on the electron microscope is amazing compared to the light microscope. And all of these different grains here are different grains of pollen from different plants. Okay. The first ever microscope that we had was a light microscope and it was invented by this chap here, Anthony van Leeuwenhoek, it's a Dutch name. Uh, by profession he was a merchant so he sold and bought things for a living and in particular he sold and bought fabrics, materials and cloth and textiles for making clothes. It was in the 1600s, 1653 that Anthony van Leeuwenhoek got a magnifying glass. So they were quite common at the time, but they were quite expensive to buy. So he bought himself a magnifying glass because he was really interested in having a closer look at the quality of the fabrics he was buying and selling. Um, uh, he became fascinated by what he could see um, and fascinated with the microscopic world. And he kind of strove to, to invent something that would allow him to see even more detail than what he could see with his magnifying glass. Uh, and being a clever guy, he invented the first primitive light microscope. Now, if you fancy looking up a picture of the light microscope that Anthony van Leeuwenhoek first designed, it looks nothing like the light microscope you've used in school. And that's because the technology has come on a long way. The light microscopes we use in school look a little bit like this. I couldn't find an exact picture. You might remember the ones we have in school have a little lamp that plugs in here. And sometimes it falls out, whereas this one's got the lamp built in. That's the main difference. With your pen and paper, what I suggest you do is I suggest you jot down the names of the different parts of the light microscope that are on your screen at the moment. And maybe just one or two words about what each part does. I am going to go through each one as well as the information that's on the board or on your screen. We'll start at the top here. One of the most important pieces of a, a light microscope is an eyepiece lens, and it's called the eyepiece lens because that's where your eye goes on the end there. And your eye looks through the light eyepiece lens down here. Oh, sorry. Um, the eyepiece lens is usually a times 10 magnification. That means it makes whatever it sees 10 times bigger. Down through the eyepiece lens are your next set of lenses. A light microscope has two different lenses and they multiply uh, the same image twice. So it, this makes it 10 times bigger. And down here, your objective lens, um, there are often three of them. You can twist this round uh, and choose which one you use. You always start with the smaller ob objective lens so you can find the image you want and then you use the bigger and bigger lenses to get more detail. So normally these are times four, times 10, 
and times 40 magnification. So if you use the times 40 and the times 10 eyepiece magnification in total, 10 times 40 is 400, so your image would be 400 times bigger. Whatever you're trying to look at goes on here on this black flat layer called the stage. And just like in performing arts, the stage is where all the action happens, and that's the same with the microscope. There are some stage clips here to hold what you're looking at in place so it doesn't get knocked, um, but your microscope slide, your glass slide, would sit on here. Underneath it, that is a small hole, and that small hole is there so that this light source here can shine light up through your sample, through the objective lens, through the eyepiece lens, and into your eye. At school, we have a lamp that slots in here. Um, you might have a lamp that you just switch on, or you could even have an, a mirror that will reflect sunlight from a window up into the microscope and through the image, through the slide to produce image. The last bit of the microscope you need to use um, is the focusing dials. There are actually two here. There's the larger circle, which is the coarse, which means rough focusing dial, and then the smaller one, which is the fine focusing dial. And what they do is, because everyone's eyes are slightly different, your friend might be looking down the microscope and saying, saying, wow, look at all these cells I can see. And then you look down there and you can see nothing, and it's just a blurry mess. That means that you need to focus it using these focusing dials for your eyes. Um, so it helps to make the image a bit less blurry and a bit more in focus. Okay, if you need to pause the video just to get down a little bit more detail, if I was talking quite quickly there, please do, and then join us on the next slide. This slide here is just weighing up the good and the bad parts about light microscopes. It's evaluating light microscopes. The reason we have them in school is because they're cheap to buy, and I say they're cheap to buy, they're cheap-ish. Um, uh, they're not cheap, but they're affordable for a school. They're easy to transport to, which is really useful if they need to move them between classrooms for different biology classes. But the problem is they have a really low magnification. They can't actually make images of cells that much bigger. Um, big enough for us to see, but not big enough to see everything that we want to see. Light microscopes, the samples, the things you're looking at have to be very thinly sliced. So if you've got something that's really valuable, the last thing you want to do is slice it into thin slices so you can see inside of it. They also have low resolution or low resolving power. Now we're going to talk about these two, magnification and resolution resolving power in a second. And we've got definitions here if you'd like to pause the video and write down the definitions to help you understand what those two words mean. The first one we'll have a look at is magnification. Magnification just means to make something appear bigger than it actually is. And we've got here what a plant cell, oh, sorry, an animal cell would look like under a light microscope. Um, it's big enough to see, which is an improvement. With the naked eye, you wouldn't be able to see an individual cell like this at all. But you can't really see much. You can see the outline of the cell, the cell membrane. You can see this dark spot in the middle here. This is the cell's nucleus. And you've also got the cell's cytoplasm here, but you can see these little flecks that hint at other things being inside the cell, and this is a whole other separate cell. Low resolution or resolving power talks about the level of detail you can see in a picture. Um, and just to prove my point, I've got two pictures here of the Eiffel Tower. They're both taken at the same magnification, because the Eiffel Tower is the same size in both pictures but they're taken with different resolving powers. The images have different resolution. This one has much greater resolution, so you can see much greater detail on the Eiffel Tower. And then over here, you can see much less resolution, and it's just a blurry mess, much like you would do looking down a microscope. To solve that problem with the light microscopes not having enough detail and enough resolution or magnification, another type of microscope was invented in the 1930s. I say invented in the 1930s, the work started in the 1930s, but it was being improved all through the 1940s, 50s, 60s, and that's still being improved today. Electron microscopes use just that. They use a beam of electrons instead of a beam of light. They have much better magnification, much better resolution, and they can produce 3D-like images. They can also see many more subcellular structures. And a subcellular structure is anything that's inside a cell. So this is what we saw in a light microscope. We saw the outside of the cell and we saw the nucleus, which is a subcellular structure. 
But under an electron microscope, we can see this, a 3D shape of the cell and many more subcellular structures inside the cell. There are many names for subcellular structures and you do need to know the individual parts when you get to GCSE and even some in year 7 and 8 and then even more if you go on to do A-level biology. But subcellular structures, you might hear them called organelles, that's another name for subcellular structures, or you might hear them being called the internal structures of a cell. Electron microscopes are fantastic because they can produce such a high resolution image that you get lots and lots of detail of what's inside of an animal cell. But the problem is they're very expensive, and when I say expensive, I mean millions of pounds. Schools can't afford these, so that's why you've never seen one or used one in school. There aren't very many in the UK as a whole, mainly in big research institutes where scientists are learning new things about cells. They're difficult to move. I don't know if you can see in this picture, it's attached to a computer. There's a lot of machinery in the background. They use a lot of electricity. They're too hard to move between room to room. And actually, they only produce images in black and white. Um, so if you see any nice, colourful electron microscope images on the internet, that's because they have been digitally enhanced using Photoshop. So um, it, there are some good electron microscope images of strawberries or of ants or um, uh, paper. Um, if you look them up on Google Images and you'll see that a lot of those are in colour and that's just all been added in afterwards. So you can see from these last two slides there are lots of differences uh, between light microscopes and electron microscopes. All of them or both of them are used to see cells and see microscopic objects but their advantages and their disadvantages are very different and that's important when it comes to evaluating these two different types of microscopes later. Right, question time. Okay, um, it's been a while since I've asked you to write anything down. So what I'm going to ask is if you can write or type the numbers one to five, I'd like you to have a little read through each of the statements next to the numbers one to five and tell me which type of microscope they're describing. So do you think they are describing an electron microscope or do you think they're describing a light microscope? Uh, so no cheating, don't just ignore the video and, and keep carrying on. Pause the video um, and write down Electron or light microscope for each of them. Off you go. Okay, uh, let's see how you did. Um, uh, so, one to five. Um, producing black and white images only is an electron microscope. Has the worst magnification of the two, that's the light microscope. Affordable and can be used in schools, that's the light microscope. Was invented first. Also the light microscope. Kudos to you if you can also remember the name of the, the gentleman that invented it. Has the best resolving power, the best detail. That's the electron microscope. So just toss up how many you've got out of five. And well done to you if you've got three, four, or even five out of five there. Well done. Okay. The hard part at the very beginning, I did give you a little sneaky warning that there might be a bit of maths coming up in this uh, video lesson. And here it is. Um, so if you didn't grab your calculator earlier, please do pause the video and go off and grab your calculator now or open the app on your phone. Okay, I say the hard part. It's not really that hard. It's just harder than the other bits that we, we've learned already about microscopes. Let's have a look at this question. We've got a leaf is viewed under a microscope using a times 10 magnification. Its image appears to be 50 centimetres long when you look down the microscope and see it. But how big is the leaf's actual size. Um, so we've got an equation here and a little equation triangle to help you rearrange it, but actually they're all typed out here. So what you might be best doing is pausing the video and writing down these three sums. Um, we're gonna use each of those um, in a moment. Okay, so the first thing you need to do, and um, my best advice is look at what the question is actually asking you. How big is its, the leaf's, actual size? Um, so you're going to want this one, actual image or actual size. And I know this is quite confusing, the wording, because we've got image here, we've got image here, we've got actual. Um, actual means what you're actually talking about, the leaf. Image means what can you see when you look down the microscope. And magnification is how much bigger is it. So in this case, what you'd need to do is you'd need to use this top one here. How big is its actual size? Actual size equals the image size divided by the magnification. So the image size is 50 centimetres divided by 10. So 50 divided by 10, the leaf is actually 5 centimetres long before it's been looked at down the microscope. 
Well done if you got that. We're going to have a, a go with one of the other examples now. But you're going to have to do this one yourself, so good luck. Right, a mushroom. A mushroom's actual size is two centimetres long. If it's viewed under a microscope using a times 2.5 magnification, how big will the image of the mushroom be? So the question's asking you, how big will the image of the mushroom be? So, have a look at the different equations down here. Decide which one you're going to use to find out the actual image size of the mushroom. Pause the video and see if you can use the numbers to figure it out. Okay, pause the video now. Right, if you're back with us, we're using this last equation at the bottom. I tried to give you a bit of a clue there. Image size equals the actual size times the magnification. So what was the actual size of the mushroom again? It was two centimetres. Um, what was the magnification of the microscope? It was 2.5. So we want two times 2.5. Then the, the mushroom will appear to be just five centimetres long. Okay, last one. A three millimetre inch has been magnified by a microscope and the image from the microscope appears to be 240 millimetres long. What magnification was used? Okay, look at these down here, look at what the question's asking you, pause the video and try and put the numbers in. Okay, pause the video now. Right. We're going to use this middle one here because what magnification was used? We're using magnification equals. The image size was 240 divided by the actual image, which was 3, and 240 divided by 3 means an 80 times magnification was used. And really well done if you pushed on and you tried by yourself to do those three. Um, uh, well done if you've practiced. If you haven't practiced, there are still more questions on Educate um, that you'll need to use this information to complete. Your last job, just to show that you were, were paying attention as we've been going through the video today and you haven't just skipped to the end, is I'd like you to produce a piece of work. Now, you can write this, um, you can do it on the computer, you can do a poster, a mind map, um, a paragraph, I really don't mind, um, as long as it has the following information in it. So give it the title, Comparing Electron and Light Microscopes. I'd like you to include some information about the history of light and electron microscopes. So we mentioned the dates in this video when they were first invented. We mentioned the name of this gentleman here. You might also want to look up um, a gentleman called Robert Hooke, who did a lot of early work with microscopes and microscopic organisms. Next, I'd like you to compare light and electron microscopes. So there was a lot of information in today's lesson about how they're similar and how they're different. And I'd like you to write that in sentences. The light microscope does this, whereas an electron microscope does that. And lastly, there's a challenge at the bottom there. It says to describe what extra information scientists have been able to learn using electron microscopes. In particular, you might want to look up the word ribosomes and find out what we've been able to learn about ribosomes using electron microscopes. Um, but there's meant lots of information out there on the internet. Feel free to Google it. It's not cheating. Um, it's just helping you read around the subject and learn extra information. Any work that you do, it'd be absolutely fantastic if you could email it to us, your science teachers, um, at the Cowley Science Department. You can find our email address on the Cowley website, along with the email addresses for all the other departments in school. Um, uh, give your work the title Microscopes, and I'll make sure it gets to your science teacher, and you'll get some feedback on that too. If you're working on paper, just snap a picture of it on your phone. It doesn't need to be scanned or high quality or anything like that. Um, uh, and if you're working on the computer, just email it as an attachment. Lastly, you need to get yourselves over to Educate um, to complete the quiz on this lesson, just to prove that you have taken part, you've picked up some new information, um, and your teachers will be able to see your scores for that. The last thing we're just going to do is have a look at what we aim to do today. Hopefully, by the end of this video now, you should be able to identify the features of a microscope. You should be able to compare some of the features between a light and electron and microscope. And hopefully you can also do the calculations for microscope using magnification, image size and actual size using the data that you've been given. Okay, thanks for listening and working along. Um, we'll have another lesson hopefully next week. Thanks.